be in service this morning. Be alive in this last closing hours. We know time in this world. We're going to have a new form of government set up in a little while. The people are completely unaware of it. Well, we have a new year. We didn't have it the first time. We didn't have a new year service, but I was expecting some people from another part of the country here. They never showed up, but we're in a new year, and pray that this will be the year that the great thing that we've been expecting God to do, that this will be the year that he'll do it. And we know that the prophet of God in his great prediction in 1933 that America would be a burning ash heap by 1977. And of course, he didn't say it was thus saith the Lord, but we know a man, a prophet, says something, it wouldn't have to be thus saith the Lord because his mind is so spiritual and so far advanced from the other people's minds that a lot of times we can't understand it. You know, that spiritual mind is always misunderstood. See, you come, uh, a man that is a prophet is made up in such a way that he is so much higher than the average Christian. It's like a mountain compared to a valley. See, you start out with an old uh, blunt, blunt axe. No edge on it at all. That's where most of you are at. Amen. Then you come down to sharpen the axe up. Now you're getting into being bright and material in. You sharpen your axe up. You get a real edge on it. And then God's servant, spirit, stays in a razor on an edge. Amen. And that's where we need to be today. Yes, is sharpen our spirits up that we may be able to come up in the realm where the Lord wants us to be. The prophet of God operating in that realm predicted and just showing how great his inspiration was. I was trying to show it to my little brother. About eight years old, sitting in a little one-room one schoolroom way down in Kentucky. An old ragged coat wrapped around him, an old pen holding it together so nobody would see he didn't have his shirt on. No undershirt, no shirt on, just an old coat wrapped around him, but there was the Lord's prophet. Amen. 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 All button up there and no paper and no pencil. He borrowed a piece of paper all at once and he borrowed a, a little piece of wood pencil off the little boy. Inspiration come up on him and he wrote a little poem about the far west. How he longed to be there. He read the poem. And then there he told about the mountain lion whining on the Arizona line. Of course, we, we know when he was 50-some years old, he killed that line. Yeah. That's the inspiration oh, the Lord come up with yeah, and he wrote about when he was a little ragged boy. So we see how how great the Spirit of God is. Yeah. Inspiration is on his service. See? And so, same inspiration he predicted, 1977 should terminate this world order. That doesn't mean that the world will be destroyed, only the order will pass away. The forms of government will pass away. And then it'll usher in the millennium. So America should be burnt, the prophet said, to 77. Now, and I'm not saying that through this way, but if there's three and a half years left to the Jews, then that would put the rapture up sometime around this year. So now, dearly beloved, you and I had better get down to business. And you people here above all people on earth are up the road. So if you believe this message, if you believe this message, you'd better be getting some steam for your tracks because this thing's running out. Well, we should be really praying and seeking the Lord Jesus with all of our heart. Now, no, nobody knows the day they're out, the day they're out, but there'll be somebody that'll know the week. Not the day they are, but the bride will be so posted by that time on the 
at resurrection, the rapture, that you'll know when he's coming. You won't know the hour of the day, the hour of the day, you see, but you'll know right in the time the Lord Jesus will come. Mm -hmm. Now, we've continually told you from the pulpit here before there's even any signs of it that the Lord Jesus told me one morning that he was waiting for this depression to come on so that you'd get your mind off of your houses, your jobs, <laughs> and you get down to business and begin to seek him. Now, I'm wondering when you as a congregation here are going to get down to that, see? Uh, the Lord's waiting on you now to call yes. him on the scene. Yes. If you want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit here, then you're going to have to get down to business with prayer. Minister yes. can't do it for you. See, a lot of us who think, well, Brother Lamb will come in, the Lord give him something, and here it'll come. It'll come that way at all. You're going, he's going to catch you weeping and wailing and crying. And it's the way you get it. See, no other way. You've got to want it with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Now, there's little groups all over the United States and the world right now. No, the end of the world's here, down in Florida, while there's doctors and lawyers and all kinds of professional people meet 5.30 every morning and pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured out. Now, you know a lot more than they do. You're more posted on the Word of God. And your prayer life here is very lax. And I can't do no more to help you. There's something that you're going to have to do yourself. Now, you see, it's 1972. See? And God's not dealing with this group here as a group of people. He's going to deal with individuals here. And some of you sitting there don't have any revelation at all. What are you going to do? See? What are you going to do? You know you can't make it like that. So it's 1972. Now, if you're going to get down to business here in this assembly, See, so you say, oh, the Lord, let me tell you, the Lord can move right off and leave us. You Amen. See? Amen. Think just because God's come here many times and poured out his spirit, we've got to have more than that. We've got to have more than the presence of God. We've got to have every person here filled full of the Holy Ghost with signs and yes. wonders and miracles and a living Christ among us. Yes. Unless we can produce what the Bible tells us to produce, we have no right to call ourselves Christians. So how many really in 1972 you want to get down to business? Yes, Lord. See, you see this thing. Haven't I told you, told you, she's going to bankrupt? Yes. Amen. Well, what are you in right now? You're in the depression right now. Yes. It's going to completely keep sliding and sliding until, what is it? It's setting up that mark of the beast. Amen. The mark of the beast is, this is the forerunner of it. That's what's bringing the man of sin in. That's what's bringing the beast in. I think we have this dear minister... What was your name, brother? What's your name? Rockola. Rockola. And you were uh, in a uh, Lutheran church. There's many ministers God's dealing with around the country. But seeing that this World Council of Churches, United Confederation of Churches, is making up an image to the beast. Now, the thing that foreruns that. You see, everything runs just as common as can be. Yes. Now, didn't, that, didn't this depression come upon you just as common as can be? Yes. I want you just, now here you're in. Fourteen men sitting right in this congregation laid off. Amen. <clears throat> now, what is it? It's time now for you to get down to business. Yes. Oh. You're not going to get it any other way than paying the price in prayer. You've got to pay the price in prayer. The reason why yes. that people... Yes can't get an outpouring of the Holy Spirit is because they're not willing to pay the price in prayer. There's a price to be paid, and we got to pay it in prayer. It's all sovereign grace, but if you want God's sovereign grace, well, then let's believe it and act upon it, see, and then it'll come to pass. Now, she's going to get steadily worse, so let me warn you as my pastor, as I told you a year before, don't be stretching out and making yourself any more bills than you got. You better be living thankful that you can live and have yeah. something to eat. Yeah. And I warned you about that a year ago. Yeah. See? Yeah. Don't be trying yeah. to stretch out and get a bigger house, bigger this, bigger that. If you got a roof over your head, you better be satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a car that's running at all, you better be praying on it to run a little longer and not yeah. be making more of this. Because the Bible said, Oh, no man, nothing. Yeah. See? You make a lot of big bills and you're in this depression, how are you going to pay your bills? Amen. And don't don't be living loose, say, well, my brother loves me, he'll pay him off. You've got the wrong attitude to begin with. Amen! Amen! So now I'm going away for a few days and I've got to sell these things to visitors here. Just a little, you know, a little personal things, the congregation. And um, 
You know, it's one thing we don't, I don't pat my people. Amen. I lay a board on them when they need it and straighten them up. Yes, Lord. Yes. trouble with the ministers today. This is a family affair. We're a family here. Yes. The way yes. one lives in this congregation hurts the whole congregation. Yes. We believe in living a good Christian life and paying our bills and obeying the laws of the land. Yes. And yes. we don't even feel fit to call ourselves Christians when we see the job or what a uh, a need it is out here in the world and sick and afflicted everywhere and people bound by denominational powers. Amen. And here we have the most glorious opportunity that ever was to rise up with the power of the Holy Spirit and slay this thing. Amen. And we're going to do it. Today. I really got confidence in you. I think where we made our mistake last year when we had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit last year, we stayed in this building night, night and day for several days. 24 hours around the clock for several days. That's all the little children and everybody. That takes God's presence to do that. You notice how the Spirit came last year? He started off with a few people coming here and praying. And then the power of God got so great that we had to call some minister friends in because we thought it was going to repeat into another day of Pentecost. And then she died down. But I think where we made her mistake, it's me feeling sorry for you and letting you go back home and then start dying down again. That's what you did. See, it just has to be that way. You have to have somebody to keep telling and pushing you and come on, come on. Well, so I'm saying, come on now. Let's really get down to business. I want to know if you people in this congregation believe that you have a hope of making a rapture. Let's hear you say amen. amen. Do you want a revival? Amen. Are you willing to pray? Yes. Are you going to pray? Yes. You want out of here by 72? Yes. Yes, Lord. All right, now, 72. This could be the last year, if you're going in a rapture, this would be the last year, it could be, that you'll be on earth. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, I know that would scare some people, but can't help us, see? It's all over. Yes. Yes. Notice, as I was saying, this depression now. Don't you let the devil tell you, all oh, the economy's going to pick up and it's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right. It's going into chaos. You get ready to meet the Lord Jesus. Not you, not, not your brother. Don't worry about your brother. You get ready to meet him. And if you don't have no revelation in the heart, you make tracks as quick as you can to get right with God. Because that's the way people are going to miss the rapture. They keep putting off. Yes, I see people like that, it hurts my heart, and they'll put it off and they'll miss it. God help me, I, this is me involved, I want to be ready when he comes. The bride has gone out of where? Closet. What closet? Prayer closet. Your closet. Find you a prayer closet. And the brothers are starting a, a morning prayer meeting here, and I want every man that's not working, you quit laying around the house. Don't be lazy, you get here in this building. And you begin to bombard heaven for God to help yes. you, help your congregation, help the bride of Christ. Yes. Don't you let your brothers carry the load. You you get in here, yes. and you men that are working, work out something else. But get to pray, yes. get to pray. See, now this 1972. Let's really yes. mean business this year. <clears throat> Brother said, wake up Jesus within you. Wake him up, see. He's been resting between the last revival and the next one coming. So now let's wake him up and call him on the scene. I want Brother George to, God bless him, watch over the congregation while I'm gone down in South America. Thank you, Lord. And uh, pray that we get the brothers down there and really praying and seeking God for us here. I believe we're right in the area where God wants to pour out his spirit to us. Let's don't let him move off and leave us and pour it out somewhere else. Let's, let's be the first ones to usher in the second coming of the Christ. So. All right, Brother George, God bless you, brother, and you watch over these sheep. I love them while I'm gone. Amen. And we've got quite a few clothes to take down those poor little brothers in South America. I think we've got 30, 40 shirts and lots of nice wash and wear trousers and this will happen. It's so hard to find long dresses for the women. Maybe we can buy some material down there and they can make them some. So you be praying for us as we go down there. And it makes it kind of hard on me, but those brothers are just dying for some revelation and pray that it would be a blessing to them. Now, I wasn't going to preach this morning. My chest is raw, but I sat back in the back and I felt 
presence of the Holy Spirit on me and quickened something to me. I didn't come prepared to preach at all. I was, was going to listen to this tape while I was at Shepherd's. So, Ben, we're not going to play this. I wish that you would listen to it at home because it's a tremendous message from God's prophet. And then I'd like for you to look in the tape library here and listen to the message that the Lord Jesus gave me on Shepherd's also. Now, without knowing Brother Brandon preached that message, I didn't know that message, hadn't heard it. The Holy Spirit dealt with me supernaturally as I was waiting up on him in a room for several days. And it's under great pressure because he told me to preach on a certain subject. And I didn't understand the subject, so I waited three days in prayer, and he came to me at the last minute. And by the Holy Spirit opened up a tremendous revelation. And I didn't realize how I knew it would come with great power, come with great power, his presence just filled up that apartment. And... Uh, and then I didn't realize how great it was until later when the, all the scriptures begin to flow into it. And then you'll see why that we have not had another repeat of Pentecost because that God didn't have the servant here that loved the sheep. So listen to this message of Brother Branham. He preached at Christmas time in Arizona. Why was it shepherd? Why did the angel of the Lord appear to shepherd? And then think, try to think deep. Help God. Ask God to help you think deep so that you don't look at... See, that's why no man, I don't care who he is, can understand this Bible mm -hmm. unless God has called him to understand it. Mm -hmm. Because you must be in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you read between the lines. He reveals his word to you in between the lines. So therefore, that's the only way to hear what a spiritual man is saying is let the Lord Holy Spirit come upon you and think deep. And then you'll really get what's intended for you out of that message. Now, glad to have our minister brother with us this morning. I'm thankful to God, brother, he calls you out of that thing out there. Because the Bible said every person that stays in there and receives the mark of the beast will go into a lake of fire that burns forever and ever. Now remember, this depression is the forerunner of the man of sin taking over. And you know our doctrine here in this church. And so you be alert now. Don't go to yes. sleep now. If you ever woke up, wake up quickly. Yes. Now. You, don't, you don't have much time. I really believe this is the year. Now there'll be either uh, there will be some great tremendous thing happened in 1972, and I'm hoping it'll be the Holy Spirit. But I know it's going to be changing me this year. So God bless you, and may this, may this be the time. I want to I want to dedicate and consecrate my life to Christ. What I do, I stay right in the room in prayer and the Word all day long and right up. I, I don't hardly even go out of the house. I stay right there in the Word. That's my responsibility. Now let's just bow our heads just a minute. The Lord Jesus give me something in the back. I may not preach about 30 minutes, but I want you to understand. <coughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus by the shed blood of the Lamb. Lord, we're so thankful Thou hast provided a way that we may escape this wrath of God that's ready to be poured out upon the world, and especially upon the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Father God, we're so thankful that all kingdoms are, are crumbling away, Lord, that the great kingdom of heaven might be set upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, how we pray that You'd help us to make, make quick steps to our feet and make haste, Lord. So we may seek the Lord Jesus Christ early while he may be found. For, Lord, it will just be a, a few more settings of the sun when many Gentiles will stream to find Jesus Christ. And they may be thinking they're finding, but they will not be able to, Lord. How we pray, Lord, that you'd help us as you're ready to turn to the 144,000 Israel, seal up the little Jewish bride. We just pray now that you'd help us Gentiles that we may become the bride of Christ. Let the marriage of the Lamb come, Lord, and let us make ourselves ready, Lord. Help us not to rely on what others do, but wait in prayer for an answer from you. God bless me now, Lord. I didn't mean to come to minister, but Lord, as you dealt with my heart, help me to say these things and help me to run the line of God straight as an arrow. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless thy word and may it find a bedding ground in the good heart of thy people. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'll, I'm going to preach on something that may be a little different, but 
it'll be true. Amen. Amen. We're trying to grind out Hallelujah. the error that's been put in God's Word. Now, if you open your Bibles to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, this is the subject that's been greatly taught on, greatly spoke of by ministers and lay members, and it's very controversial. But I, I love good, solid truth. I love good, solid truth. And that, that heaven's earth is going to pass away, but now truth is going to stand. And it'll always come out of a place where you think it won't come out of, and by yeah, you yeah. think it won't come out of. See? Yeah. Now let's read the scripture, and you pray in your heart for me that my I'll be able to hold up. My lungs is very raw. Let's start reading here in verse seven, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. But every unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascendeth up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. <clears throat> now notice he said, gave gifts unto men. Now these are office gifts. These are not the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. None of these offices are given to women. Amen. They're only given to men. Yes. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit can be given to a woman, but these office gifts, cannot be given to a woman. It's against the word of God. <clears throat> now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Now this is Christ, soul and spirit descending down into the regions of the lost to preach to those that do, did not repent in the ministry of Noah and Abraham and all the great patriarchs. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, Amen. sanctified ones, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, mm -hmm. under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, wherein these preachers lie in wait to deceive you. Mm -hmm. But speaking the truth and love, may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make its increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. May God add a blessing to his eternal word. Amen. Now I'd like to speak on the ministry of the bride of Christ in this last day. Not in the days of Luther or Wesley or any other day, but this day you and I are living in now. Now notice that anybody can read the Bible. Anybody can say I'm a Christian. Anybody can make themselves a minister and believe they are. But see, the scripture is never to you until it's by a revelation. It's just like divine healing. Now you can believe in divine healing. You can... Quote the scriptures, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. But that will never be beneficial to you. You'll never be able to take a hold of that until the Holy Spirit comes up on that scripture, by his stripes I'm healed, then you'll be healed and not until. See? And you could say that right on to your, right on to your deathbed. I am healed, I am healed, I am healed. And you should. And that's the way you receive the revelation is stay right with the written Word of God. The Holy Spirit will come upon it, quicken it to you, and when it's quickened by the Holy Spirit, then it's in your heart by divine revelation, you've got it, whatever the Scripture is. That's the same with healing, same with salvation. Salvation is by faith, and faith is a revelation by the Holy Spirit to you. See? Now notice, 
on this body of Christ, this five, we call it five-fold ministry because it's five offices in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to preach this different than you ever heard it before in your life. And the reason I'm bringing it is because I believe it's solid truth, and you need to know it. And I know that many of you wondered about it, and I had a question on it, and so I didn't mean to preach this this morning. I'm not prepared for it, but I try to stay prepared. Amen. And, uh, and feel led of the Lord to say this this morning. Now I notice, I want you to, first thing, I want you to get in your mind that we have not been able to tell where the body is. Now there's been great Bible teachers raised up, I've heard them, enjoyed their ministry. Hundreds of Bible uh, teachers and some of the great ones in this last day, like Brother C. Parker Thomas is a good, fine, wonderful brother. Uh, brother Bush, Brother Bill Britton, and many fine men who saw enough in the scriptures and they upset the denomination ranks very greatly with their ministry. They had great impact, drawed great crowds, moved the audiences very much to a closer walk with the Lord. And they majored their teaching and had such an impact and the denomination of preachers were helpless before it. So therefore, they pulled a lot of people out of the churches. And that is the subject that they majored on was called the body ministry. Now, notice that the body, speaking of here in Ephesians 4, is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's only one. That's only one church. There's only one church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's not 900 different denominations, churches. Mm -hmm. There's only one church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All else is false. Amen. All else is false. How many say amen to that? <laughs> There's only one bride. I don't have many brides. I have one bride. She's sitting back there by the chimney. Amen. She's mine. Now, can you imagine about 500 other women claiming to be my wife when I know that she's my wife? Amen. Now, the Baptists are claiming to be his wife. The Methodists are claiming to be his wife. The Pentecostals are claiming to be his wife. Church of Christ, hundreds of different denominations, thousands of different indiv individual independent works are claiming to be the bride of Christ. They're claiming that they're going to go into rapture. A total impossibility. A total impossibility. That's why Jesus said, one, two in a bed, I'll take one, take one, leave one. Two in a field, I'll take one, leave one. Goes to show you that it's not going to be the way that the denominations, theologians, and the preachers have got it figured out. Jesus Christ came contrary to all the preachers' interpretations, but he came correctly with the Word of God, Amen. and nobody recognized him for who he was. Amen. God himself tabernacled on a little preacher Amen. called Jesus Christ, Amen. and when he got through his ministry, how many did believe him? 120. Amen. So will it be today. There's only one bride, there's only one church, one bride and one Amen. church. And that bride is his body. Amen. That bride is his body, the church. And there's only one head Amen. to that body, and that head is Christ himself. Amen. That's why the, the head of the woman is yes. the man. Yes. The head of the woman is the man. Hallelujah. The head of the church is the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Not Bishop so-and-so. Not uh, what they say down in St. Louis, Missouri, what they say over in Rome. That has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Her headquarters is not in St. Louis. Amen. Amen. Not in Toledo, Amen. Ohio. Amen. Her headquarters are in heaven. Amen. She gets her instructions down through the head. Amen. The one head. Christ Jesus. Amen. The head of the body. Amen. The head of the church. The head of all principalities and all powers. The head of all things. The word himself. Now notice here we have been in a confusion. We've been living in darkness upon the word of God. Now you know that we have proved by the Bible 
showed you that the true revelation upon the word has been closed up, Amen. even since the days of Daniel. Amen. That even the great prophets, as spiritual as they were, the apostle Peter in the first epistle of Peter said that the great up, great prophets of old desired to look into the revelation of this book and was not able to understand it. But he said, hope for the hope for the grace Amen. of God. Yes. Hope for the grace of God that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of this book. And by what are you saved? By grace are you saved. And he said, hope for that grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ in this last day. The first epistle of Peter in about the third chapter. Is that right? Yes. Notice that we have been in darkness upon where the bride is. Where is the body? Well, we want to say, well, uh, she's over in the Baptist, a couple of them. A few of them's over in the Methodist, a total impossibility. Amen. It's a total impossibility for you to be, now I know it's as hard, I can't help but see. See, I know that if I, there's got to be somebody Amen. here that'll take the Word of God and stand Amen. for it for get something real. And then when it all happens, they say, well, how did they get that? Just for staying with the Word of Amen. God. Amen. You know, if you'd have heard Abraham preach, it maybe not had too much effect on you the first time you heard him. Amen. But I tell you, where you believed him or not, when he come down the street with a baby, that made the whole thing. Amen. So it'll be just that way. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, say, oh, yeah, well, why? Uh huh. Jesus Christ, God himself, 120 following him. Amen. Now notice here, uh, it's a total impossibility for the rapture to take place. And this one over in the Methodist go and the Baptist go and this one over here goes. And anyway, when the rapture goes, the boycott will be on, the mark of the beast will be set down. And if you are sitting in there, you are to be judged by the Lord God and cast into hell. So that it can't be. So therefore, Jesus said in the Bible, the Bible said if you say you're in this Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever the denomination is that you're in. He said, come out. Amen. Come out of there and yes. then you'll be my son and daughter and not until. Is it's a total impossibility for you to have the new birth and be in any denomination. Amen. You, you may confess that you believe in him as your personal Savior, but you're not born again yet. Amen. You're not born again yet. It's a total impossibility. Because to be born again, you have to receive a life. Amen. You have to receive a life of God, and there is no life in any denomination. It is dead. Amen. It's the gates of hell. Amen. It's the devil's church. Amen. And But God has people down in denominations, and they have got to come out of there Amen. before they can receive a life to be born again. Amen. Now, when you run a straight, when you put the cow on the ground picking grass, put the moon up in the sky, put the roof on the barn. Amen. They don't put the man over in the, over in the desert trying to fish at the shore of Galilee. Yes, right. Put him on the bank of Galilee, put the fishing pole in his hand, put the hook down in the water. In other words, run the Bible straight and you'll come out right. Say what God says. Yes. Don't try to please the crowd. Please God. Yes. That's what's the matter preachers today. See, a great big fine church, a great big congregation. Drive a Cadillac, drive a Lincoln, see? Oh, God, him. There'll be a real bride somewhere. See, you know, he said, you can't be God's child and stay in any denomination. He said, come out of there, and then you'll be my child. Then you'll be my son. Then you'll be my daughter. Sure, you come out of there and get born again, you'll be his child. Now, notice here, we're trying to find out where is the bride, where is the true church at. Now notice, if you were living right after the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, you could prove where the bride was at. Amen. The scribes went on saying they was the wife of Jehovah. The Sadducees said they were the wife of Jehovah. Jehovah, all of those denominations back there said they were the wife of Jehovah. But where was his wife? He had divorced them and had married his little bride. And she was numbered 120. Yes. And if you was living in that day, if you'd ask where the bride is, you'd say, come tonight. We're meeting tonight at 7 o'clock. I'll show you the bride of Christ. Yes. You could have walked right in there and saw the bride. Yes. 
You saw Mary, the mother of Jesus' body, Mary Magdalene, Apostle Peter, James and John, Philip, Stephen. All of that made up the bride. But now you ask where the bride is and nobody knows. Come on. Nobody knows where there's a bride. There's going to be a bride. There's going to be a church that Jesus Christ is going to prove to the religious world which is my bride and which isn't my bride. This is my church. He's going to say one of these days real soon, this is my bride, this is my church, and this is not my bride. This is not my bride. He's getting ready to prove which is his bride and which is not his bride. Now notice that the marriage of the Lord Jesus Christ to the bride has not taken place yet. And before you can prove there is a bride, you first got to have a marriage. But just as soon as the marriage takes place, then the Holy Spirit is going to say, this is the bridegroom and this is the bride. Amen. Now notice what we got now. We got the bridegroom coming to a virgin bride. Five wise virgins. Now notice that God has a divine provided way to call his bride, to make himself a bride. He has one divine pattern, one God provided way to bring his bride to himself. All else is false. Heavens and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall never pass away. See, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little bit and there a little bit, you get it. Amen. Now notice here, we have not been able to prove these great teachers. And notice just as soon as these ministers raised up, these great Bible teachers, they claimed that this group that they were preaching to were the body, were the bride. But now notice here the thing that they can't answer me. I say, when you bring those people in and you're the body, yes, we're the body. And you have in your body apostles, prophets, evangelists, all his gifts, and all, yes. Angels are seeing visions, everything. I say, now how, tell me by the scripture how they come into the, your body. Yes. They can't tell me then. Well, I say, when they come in and become part of us and line up with the word, then they're the body. I say, give me scripture, though. Don't explain it. Give me the Bible. Amen. Tell me how in the Bible they get in there. Amen. They can't do it. Amen. Notice here, all these men have tried to build a body for the Lord Jesus Christ, and they themselves now are in confusion on it because they see that they've never been able to come up with what the body said the body would do. Yeah. If the Bible said that the bride would have brown eyes, she's got to have brown eyes. Amen. If the Bible says she's going to be five foot two, she's got to be five foot two. Amen. God's word's eternal. Amen. And the Bible lays down here and says what the bride is going to be and what she's going to do. Yes. She's going to be bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, spirit Amen. of his spirit, and power of his power. Amen. The very works and acts of power that Jesus Christ did has got to do in the bride or it's not the bride. Amen. The blind's got to see, the lame's got to walk, the dead's got to Amen. be raised. The gospel's got to be preached Amen. in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. There's got to be a creative power in the bride that can even move a mountain. She can create. I've not seen any body rise up like that. All I've seen is dead bodies. All I've seen is a battle of words. No authority, no power, nothing to back it up. And those that claim to be the body said and examined, it's a bunch of shim sham. Yeah, yeah. And then the guys tell me this is the body. Oh, yeah, we got five women here. Every one of them sees these. My. My. Hmm. My, oh, yeah, we got the gifts of the Spirit. What does he always quote in the Bible? Yeah. Why yeah. don't it tell the secrets of the heart? Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit is not to play around with and quote Scripture. Amen. The gift of the Holy Spirit is to speak with different languages. Inter the gift of interpreting tongues is a supernatural gift to an ignoramus person that don't know any language. Amen. God's people are usually poor people, uneducated people. And they don't study, go to college and study languages. But when they receive the genuine baptism yes. of the Holy Ghost, God's tabernacle and their human flesh, God gives them an inheritance, a gift, of being able to interpret foreign languages. 
Hallelujah. Foreign languages, Glory. not confused in a tongue. Like these so-called Pentecostals taken into Yale University and all these great universities across the countries in Notre Dame, getting all them young college students in there and tell them to raise their hands, say, Jesus, Jesus, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And finally, they speak in tongues. And all this moving life magazine talking about glossolite and all this stuff. What is this? Nothing but the handwriting on the wall. Amen. 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 What is all this unknown tongue? The tongues that they speak in, I don't find it in the Bible nowhere. Amen. All that Jesus moving on. The very Jesus Amen. that these hippies are talking about, I've never met that Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Never met him. Amen. But the Jesus Christ that I met is a holy God. He's a righteous Amen. God. And he's a God of his word. God is in his word. God's in his church. God's in his word. The devil come up and tell you 99% truth and hook you with 1% lie. Amen. You got to take all of my word, eat all of my prayers, drink all of my word. I have to hit you. I said, you want all the truth? Why are you wearing that long hair? The Bible says it's shame for a man to have long hair. Why are you wearing it? Then a wimp tells, Lord God, hallelujah, yes, I spoke in tongues, so what? The devil does too. Amen. Amen. The devil speaks in tongues. So just open up your heart, just open up your heart, and say the first thing it comes to that's not in English, that's right, the devil come right along and let you speak in his tongues. But if you want to get the genuine Holy Spirit, Amen. you're going to have to come by the way of the Word. Amen. Word, line upon line upon line upon line. Amen. Take God's word. The Bible said, woman, don't cut your hair and go ahead and cut it. What are you going to do? The Bible said, let the women dress themselves in modest apparel. And these women come to these churches, you old skin down, tight dresses. They can hardly get them up on them. And every man's eyes in a church walk, watch them wiggle up the aisle. The Bible said, he that looketh upon a woman's figure to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his life. What's the matter? The backslidden preachers don't want to tell her like it is. God is a holy God and his people is a holy, peculiar people. Hallelujah. It's holiness or hell. They said, old Lamb will burn down. I ain't burned down yet 13 years. Oh, I said, preach it. Say, oh, Brother Lambert, maybe God just called you to preach that. I said, if I'd preach like you, said, I wouldn't have another meeting to go to. I preached it like that, and I didn't have another meeting to go to either. But I said, if God called me to preach the gospel, there has to be somebody here somewhere to listen to me. And now people drive 500 miles to hear a bald head of preacher tell the truth. Amen. He was out there. How can a man go into the storefront building in a town that's already got all kinds of denominations in it and fill it up? Well, it's God. Amen. It's God. Somebody wants to hear the truth. Somebody wants somebody to tell the truth. No, what is it? No, they want to they want to have a body. Like I, a great teacher told me, said, oh, we're going to have an apostolic fellowship, Brother Lamb. We're going to have a New Testament apostolic church. I said, preacher, you'll never get it by letting them women sit there with makeup on and that old blue stuff under their eyes and their hair all cut off and their dresses up six or eight inches above their knees, speaking in tongues of prophesying. I said, you'll never get what Peter got like that. He said, what do you think ought to do, Brother Bob? I said, have you ever met him? Yes. I said, I'll, he, he said, oh, Brother, uh, Brother Amber said, the word of the Lord comes to you, and it's having a supernatural that day, see? And he said, the word of the Lord comes to you, and tells me anything. Oh, and he's a real humble brother, great man. And I said, yes, if he ever tells me, I'll sure tell you. And he come on and said, has the Lord showed you anything yet? I said, Brother, I want to ask you a question. You want all this power, you want to get the ministry and the power of God, I said, well, I ask you one thing. Have you ever met Jesus? Yes, yes. Have you ever talked with him supernaturally? Yes. Amen. Well, I said, brother, come by, lay hands on my spoken tongues. I said, I'm not talking about it. Have you ever met the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. I said, if you're ever called to God, the Lord Jesus Christ will appear to you personally and talk to you and call you, and no man will ever take that away from you. And you'll defy the world with the Word of God. 
They couldn't burn it out of you, couldn't cut it out of you, nothing. It's that. Well, no, I ain't. I said, then the first thing that I'd recommend to you is go off and find yourself a hole and crawl in it and meet him. You'll never mount the hill of beans until you meet him. Yes, What if he went down and got him a place way down in the wilderness somewhere and stayed one day and come back with a plan? Yeah, come back with a plan. And the plan wasn't worth two cents. Could have stayed there and met God as mounted or something. The way we tried to have body ministries, apostolic churches, brides of Christ, and, and where's it at today? Show me one place in the United States where you can go and by the scriptures prove that this is the bride of Christ. Amen. Now there's going to be a bride. There's going to be a body. There's going to be a marriage of the Lamb coming. And it's only the body, the bride, the true church that's going to go in the out resurrection from among the dead. How many want to be in that body, that bride? Then if we're going to go in, we're going to have to come according to the word of God regardless of what anybody else thinks. Amen. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. See? Now notice here. God is going to have a bride, a body, a supernatural church. Just exactly like you read of in the book of Acts, it'll be just exactly like that. Amen. The book of Acts never had an ending to it. It just dropped off all of a sudden. Why? It's because there's going to be another book of Acts wrote out from behind the bride of Christ of the end time. Hallelujah. Now notice here, how are we going to have this Apostolic. Five-fold ministry. How is it going to come into existence? Here's what I think is the truth of God's Word. Not my opinion. Opinion is heresy. Amen. If that's all I'm bringing you this morning is my opinion, every one of you need to leave here. Amen. Amen. I don't want to listen to what uh, this preacher's opinion. I want to know what the Word of the Lord is. Amen. Your opinion will pass away, but the Word of God will not pass away. Amen. What's God say about it? What's the truth of it? Nothing's wrong somewhere. Amen. Everybody claiming to be the bride. Well, you can go on claiming to be the bride all you want to. But what are you going to say when the rapture comes and you don't go in it? You ain't going to say you're the bride then. Your husband done left the earth. And he didn't take you with him. <laughs> Oh, what a fearful thing to do. Yeah, yeah, realize we're living in 1972 and the rapture may take place this year. Six months. This month, I don't know. Now, notice here. I, I want to say it just like it is. <laughs> None of these offices, these gifts, so don't confuse that I said these, he ascended up on high and gave gifts unto men. These were offices. And I tell you, they're not handed out like food stamps is. Amen. And I want to tell you something else. God don't hand out the Holy Ghost like these preachers is handing out down here at Yale University in Notre Dame. Right. I've seen, oh, now this is a fine, I don't mean to call him by his name, but I, I see, I call somebody his name, and I ain't pounding him, I ain't got nothing against him. I tell them that, but right to their face. Amen. I've always said I'll never say anything about behind anybody's back what I wouldn't say right to their face. Because well, I don't say it out of God. I just say it because it's true. Yes. And if anything yes. happens to me, it's bad. I tell it along with the good. Amen. Right before the congregation. Yes, I want yes, them to know everything about me. See? And why do they hang on to every word that I say? Because they see the life that I live. Amen. Amen. That's the main thing. God don't hand out the Holy Ghost like food stamps. All you have to do is just come up and say, Jesus, Jesus, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, you got it. No, you ain't got it. See, no, how can God give somebody the Holy Ghost when the heart is black as midnight? Yes. Got a serpent coiled up in there just as hissing all the time. How can the Holy God come down into that soul and the serpent down in there too? Right. You got to kill that serpent down in the heart. Yes. You got to be sanctified. Yes. You ain't going to fill up a glass of water and it's all dirty and filthy. Some brother said, you need to go by uh, Brother Brown's down in Philadelphia. He, I used to minister for full gospel businessmen international. And all oh, that pops out, oh, Lambert's going to have a greater minister, this and that and that. I used to listen. 
I said, repent every one of you, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and make sin, then you receive the real Holy Ghost. Oh, Lambert lost his ministry. <laughs> oh, Lambert started out good, but he did run well. What did hinder him? Now they're all riding around Cadillacs, but I'd rather, rather, I'd rather ride a broomstick, hallelujah, and be riding with God. Yeah. I was wore, uh, laying underneath an old automobile that's wore out and a hundred and some thousand on it, and I didn't know nothing about mechanics, and I was putting on bearings backwards, and this valve being wrong, and I was having an awful time. And this old guy looked down at me, it was the bad problem it was. He said, you nuts, you? He said, if you had any sense at all, you could be riding a, a brand new Cadillac and not be laying out there, out of that old thing. I looked up at him, sweating, aggravated, and knuckles bleeding, and oh, just in awe. Yeah, but oh! <laughs> what you gonna do with that Cadillac when the, the rapture takes place? Huh? <laughs> Boy, I'd rather have him with me. Amen. You can't throw beans and cornbread the rest of your life. You'd be better off. Amen. Notice here. All the brothers said you ought to go down and, and help uh, 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 Jim Brown down in Philadelphia. Of course, he's got a great presidential church, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Great man. Anyway, great man. And said, Brother Bob, you need to go down. You can help them people. He said, they think that they're getting the Holy Ghost. And then women speaking in tongues and everything and going to the psychiatrist. Oh, I can't imagine that. What what you get in there and be, uh, think you're so filled with the Spirit, you're speaking in tongues and prophesying, and then being so upset the next day you got to go to the psychiatrist. Yes. Oh, Taking tranquilizers. Glory to God, if you ever got the Holy Ghost, like Peter did in Inoculate you every time you ever need him. You got no Holy Ghost, it just spoke in some kind of a confusion. You know, they think, no, oh, it's a great revival. It ain't a revival at all. Amen. Nothing but the devil. Amen. Amen. They had about 5,000 in a meeting, big regional convention, and they're just walking around, and, and it's, oh, Holy Ghost is moving. Oh, yes, sir. And the preacher was getting plenty of money. Right. One preacher said, got that boo-hoo and cried, said, I, the reason why I wasn't down to meet last night, I said, I knew it was my time to take up an offer, and I prayed all night long to the wee hours of the morning, and the Lord Jesus revealed to me that he was going to do a great supernatural something that never been done before. You know what it was? He was going to get 300,000 oh, out of that congregation. He got it. I said, my heart, I said, oh, buddy, the devil spoke to you. Jesus Christ never told any preacher that if they gave $300,000, he'd heal 10 people with cancer. He said, buy not with your money giver, but buy my spots, you are healed. What is they taking the gospel and turned it into uh, uh, nothing but a sign and a sorcerer? Nothing but a bunch of money-hungry, money-begging preachers. Let me tell you something. They say, well, that's your brother you talk about. Hell's too good for him. Amen. Man, to get up and preach for money, hell's too good for him. Amen. God ought to have a worse place in hell for a preacher like that. I mean that with all my heart. Amen. God help me if you ever see me turn into a money beggar, every one of you walk away from me and have nothing to do with me anymore. Amen. Thirteen years I've preached the gospel and I've never took up an offer and I never will. Amen. It makes me sick to my stomach. And call that the ministry of Christ. It ain't done it either. No, what is it? All this supposed to be the body, and that's supposed to be the body, and this supposed to be the church of Jesus Christ. What is it today? It's in darkness and confusion. Amen. This and claiming to be an evangelist, this and claiming this and that, claiming that. Let's look and see what God said in his word. Amen. Now notice here, this is the book of Ephesians you're reading, and that is the perfect church. The book of Ephesians was the perfect church. That was the group of people that Paul could speak mysteries to and they could understand them. This was the church that was justified, sanctified, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. This is the church that obeyed the word of truth and were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. This was the body of the bride of Jesus Christ. Now notice that we went through the dark ages. Is that right? They killed all the apostles. The last one was Polycarp, and then the last one after him was Irenaeus. And then we go through a spell. We don't see these great ministries anymore. We go through a time of history called the Dark Ages. 
Now notice, we got away from the body of Christ. We got away from the, uh, 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 from the real apostolic church of Jesus Christ. You don't see no more gifts, no power. All them great things that the early church had. We go through the dark ages. And then there's a little seed. As the apostles were martyred and the seed went in the ground, God said, I will restore, say the Lord. Now that brings us up through Martin Luther, begin to sprout up. But now notice, Martin Luther had plenty of error. Amen. He, one area, he, in fact, you read a Martin Luther today and you wouldn't even, so much revelation today, you wouldn't even know he's even a Christian. The, the things that he wrote about and the things that he said, see. Now notice here, these five offices is for the perfecting of the little bride, Amen. which is the true church. These offices is to perfect them and bring them into perfection. You say, well, I can't be perfect. You will be perfect before you go up there. <laughs> so I can't make it. Well, somebody will. See? Jesus said, accept your righteousness. Exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now, the only way that your righteousness could exceed their righteousness is to take on the righteousness of Christ. Amen. 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 If you don't get his righteousness, you can't go. Amen. Now, notice here, the bride here, Paul said, Christ ascends upon high and he gives out gifts, five office gifts, to bring this people into perfection. Amen. Now let's watch here. Now the first, the first gift, now notice, let me say it, God not one time did he ever call a woman and make her a pastor, a teacher, apostle, or a prophet. Not one time. And yet we have hundreds of them, the Baptist ordained, the Methodist ordained, and all kinds of denominations called women's liberation. I would like to preach one message to the, the women's liberation group. <laughs> one message. That's all. And I'd like to preach right from Genesis 3.14. Where God Almighty said, Let the, your desire to, shall be to your husband all the days of your life, and he shall rule over you. Amen. Amen. And Paul, quoting from Genesis, said, let I command that no woman teach or usurp authority over the man. Right. Now here, men laid off from 14 in our church. Why? Because the women's in the post office, the women's got the police department, the women's here. But if all them women would have married and the husband go out and work, you'd be in a lot better shape. Right. She gets out there and meets somebody else, and you know, you're working evenings, she's working days, and when you go out to the back door, mm -hmm, you went out to the front door, he come in the back, and that now our country's in the shape it's in right now. Right. I know women don't like that. People don't like it today. This is truth anyhow. The little place for the woman is at home. Amen. I believe your husband's sick, you're depressed, you go out and work, you find the right kind of job, but it's not the perfect will of God, I tell you. Amen. Now the little bride's going to do his will, though. Amen. Now notice here, he's sitting up on the high and he gave gifts unto men. People, people say, well, women preachers say, oh, Brother Lambert, what about Deborah? What about Deborah? Deborah was in the government. Amen. Not in the priesthood. Right. She was a judge. Yes. Politics and the bride is two different things at all. Amen. That's why I don't believe in a preacher dabbling around in politics. Right. Right. Okay. They were, what about uh, 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 Mary Magdalene? She said, go, go tell my disciples. Jesus said, go tell my disciples. Said, Didn't that make her evangelist? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. I've had them tell me that. See? No, it doesn't make them evangelist. Nope. Now notice here, there's going to be a bride. How many say amen to this? There's going to be a, a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish to go into rapture. Amen. And there has to be something on earth to get that bride dressed. Amen. To get her cleaned up, to get her ready, to get her perfected. Amen. And he says that he'll do that by a five-fold ministry. Now, here's what I believe is the truth of it. Mm -hmm. These office gifts never come into existence till the evening time. Amen. 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 There was no prophet. Amen. There was no apostle. Amen. 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 Absolutely. 
Why is becoming we call we come out of the dark ages? And the first man that God even used a little bit, he stepped out just in the edge of the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther stepped out just in a little bit of the Holy Spirit, and that, that little Holy Spirit of Martin Luther had shocked the world. Yes. Absolutely yes. shocked the world from its foundation. Now let me say amen to that. Then when that got common, he walked a man out by John Wesley and put him in the water up to his ankles. Yes. Amen. And that was so much of the Holy Spirit made such an impact, it shocked the world. Amen. Shocked all the Lutherans that was organized to come out of there. Amen. And on down. But Martin Luther was not a prophet. Amen. He was a reformer. Amen. John Wesley was not a prophet. Amen. Those were men bringing forth a reformation. Amen. They was not bringing forth a restoration, but a reformation. Amen. They had the life of the word that was moving through them. Amen. But it was only forming the stalk. You don't get no corn out of the stalk. The corn is at the top. After the, after the stalk, the leaves and the tassel, then comes forth the fruit, the, the grain. Martin Luther was not a prophet. John Wesley was not a prophet. Now, why wasn't Martin Luther a prophet? He couldn't be. Why wasn't Wesley a prophet? He couldn't be. Why? Because a prophet, before you can be a prophet, You've got to be called to be a prophet. And then when you are a prophet, God calls you, sets you aside, and reveals his word to you. Amen. You stay in the presence of God away from the people. A prophet does not mix with people. Amen. He's made up in such a way that he can't sit and talk to you all day. Amen. He can't do it. He's got to be alone. Why? Amen. It's because he has to be alone, made up that way. So that he can become the word. When you see when you saw Amos the prophet walking down the street of Samaria, Amos was the word of the Lord. Prophets are the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. And they stay in training of the Holy Spirit till they become the word. A prophet is the word. Now you see why Lutheran was a reformer. Wesley and all of them. But now notice here, they did not have these office gifts of prophets. Now I'm going to really hint up something here a minute. Great truth. Amen. Now notice here, the first, before you can get a bride, yes. without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, a bride to be married to Christ, how are they going to become the bride if there isn't something there to, to bring them to what the bride's supposed to be? Yes. In other words, before there was a fins on a, a fish's back, there had to be water for it to swim in. Before you were sick, there had to be a healer first. Now before that there could be an apostolic church, an apostolic bride, there has to be something there to wash that bride, to help that bride, to dress that bride, to make her the bride. Amen. I may say amen. amen. Notice that we did not, the first office that we had of this fivefold ministry, now what is it? The Ephesians, get this now, the Ephesian church was the perfect church. Read it in the book of Revelation. It was the perfect church. Now God is resurrecting a church just like the Ephesian church. Amen. Only amen. greater. Amen. Now notice here, before we could get the bride church to what it's supposed to be, first we got to have something. First we got to have something. Like the water for the feet to swim in. The ground for the seed to go in. Now notice that the first office gift to call the bride, to perfect the bride, the first one promised is the seven church age message. Amen. Brother William Branham was the first prophet, was the first prophet to come on the scene since the days of the apostles. Amen. 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 Now think just a minute. Why did he come on the scene? When you seen him come on the scene with the word of the Lord, then it was time for a bride church to come forth like the one that did on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Because God could not call a bride until first the word got here. Because Amen. the bride is to be 100% unadulterated 
word born bride. Amen. So therefore he had to call a prophet because only a prophet has the word of the Lord. Amen. Read Amos 3 and 7. Amen. God said, I will do nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Nothing. Until first I reveal it to my servants. So what? The Bible said that the word of God is no private interpretation. Amen. But the word of the Lord comes to who? Uh -huh. Notice before God could have a word born by the supernatural church, the first thing that happens, a prophet has got to come on the scene. Yes, then Malachi 4 and 5 was the first office gift of God that was coming to the bride. Yes. Now what did he do? Yes. Now when he comes on the scene, he is to lay a foundation. Yes. Now, yeah, i got a sticker yeah. for you. The Bible said that the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher, their job was to perfect the thing. Amen. Now, how could the pastor perfect the saints when he wasn't perfected yet? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, could the, how could the evangelist go evangelize you into the unity of one divine revelation when he didn't have the revelation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How could the evangelist go and tell you to be baptized and tied with Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Amen. And perfect you. He didn't help you one bit. Good. They come and tell you you can receive the Holy Ghost, just raise your hand and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I've heard speaking tongues like that. How's that going to perfect the bride? It ain't. It can't. Before there can even be a bride body in the end time, there has to be first one prophet come on the scene with the word of the Lord to bring the word back. Amen. He's got to get the foundation of the apostles back again. Amen. He's got to get the truth of the word back again. Amen. And Malachi 4 and 5 was to do that. Amen. As John the Baptist was a forerunner of the first coming of the bridegroom. Amen. Malachi 4 and 5 is to be a forerunner of the second coming of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Amen. And his ministry is a prophet's ministry. Why? Is why it's because we've got to get the word back if we're going to. If there's got to be a rapture, and before there be a rapture, there's got to be the bride, and before there can be a bride, there's got to be a message here that's unadulterated word of the Lord. Amen. Now watch this. Now the first thing for the perfecting of the saints is that this major prophet comes, Malachi four and five. Notice here that now here's the sticker. See, we're looking for a great big number. Amen. You can just forget that yes, right now. <laughs> there wasn't a great big number in the first day, and there won't be in the end time. Okay. And if that was in the dry, uh, in the green tree, what are they going to do over here in the dry? Amen. If God himself only got 120 up the upper room, now there ain't going to be very many. There ain't going to be a great million that's going to believe under receiving eternal life. Okay. Many will be convicted, but a few will have time to be converted. Amen. Notice here this found this major prophet, Malachi 4 and 5, with the ministry of John, is the seven church age messenger. He lays a solid foundation. Amen. He brings back the original foundation of the first apostolic church. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Now notice then. Now we see that he is to call a multitude of people out of the denomination. Read Revelation 14. If you got your pencil, mark that down. The third angel of Revelation 14 is Brother William Branham. Amen. His message was on the seal of God. Amen. Yes, sir. Now notice here, Brother Branham, God's servant and prophet for this last day, was not a reformer, but he was a restorer. Amen. Bringing the word of God back. Now notice the word restore and the word redeem is one and the same. Restore means to redeem back. Bring back, redeem means to buy back. They're both the same thing. And the Bible says in the book of Joel that what all the denominations that Christ took away, the prophet Joel said, I will restore, saith the Lord. Amen. All that that Antichrist ate off of the true bride of Christ, I'll restore it back. Amen. Now, in order to bring a restoration, the first thing he's got to do is to bring a prophet. Now, notice that they have read this scripture here down through all the ages, but it wasn't applied. Amen. This can only be applied to the first day bride 
with Apostle Paul and Peter and them and can only be applied to the end time bride in the eighth day. Not in the seven church ages, but out of the seven church ages and into the eighth day is the resurrection of the end time supernatural apostolic bride of Christ. Now here's the secret. Brother Branham was not only a prophet, but he was an apostle. Now let me say this. There is no such thing in the Bible as when the missionary. We hear so much of that today. Well, I believe she's called to be a missionary. Completely contrary to the scriptures. A missionary is not some a girl that's left home with a great desire to be a missionary and goes over in Africa and hands out tracts. That's not a missionary. That's just somebody trying to do God a service without his will. Amen. Go right ahead, but it'll never amount to nothing. No women missionaries. A missionary, let me say it, God grind it down in your heart. A missionary is a apostle prophet. Amen. He is a sent one with the message of the hour. Amen. Ain't there going to be a whole big battle of them, honey? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we got the, see, we got the whole thing turned around. Amen. Brother Branham, I like what Brother Branham said in front of the great denominational leaders of this country after he come back from America, uh, from America. After a great lawyer and a Baptist minister told him, said, Billy, you mean to tell me that that voice that spoke out of heaven there? That it told you with a fourth grade education that you are going to go around the world and pray for kings and government officials? Amen. You, Billy? Amen. He said, he said it, I didn't. Amen. <laughs> said he said it, said if he said it, that it'll be. Amen. Well, when little brother Billy got back from Africa, Amen. the great leaders of the denominations wanted to talk to him. He stood up before me and said, I went to Africa. I met your Baptist missionary. I met your Church of Christ missionary. I met your uh, Methodist missionaries. I, I met your Pentecostal missionaries. And he said, all them years and millions and millions of dollars that you sent over there for them to ride around in the new car in and live in the best hotels and the best apartments in Africa and ride around and pass out a little track once in a while that I had an old mommy over in America struggling on the work board to send money over there to little Junior and little Mary over on the mission field. And said so they had out tracks and they'd talk to some Mohammedan and, and finally they'd get him to, uh, to, to carry a Bible around with him and to carry a Bible around in one arm and an idol in the other. That if the idol don't fail to keep the evil spirits away, the Bible will. That was the strength of the American missionaries. And two great missionaries, Brother Bram asked him, say, how many years have you been here? Five years. He said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, can you put your finger on one converted Mohammedan? And they said, no, sir, not one. He said, young lady, you need to be back home with your mommy with an apron on, peeling potatoes. Amen. Amen. you got no business over here on a mission field. Amen. Amen. And he said, now, great leaders of your great denomination, what you call holy rollers, and fanaticism, one more soul to Jesus Christ in 10 minutes than all your denominations have been able to do for the last 500 years. Yeah. And one man with the power of God, 30 some thousand raw heathens Amen. accepted Christ in yeah. 10 minutes time yeah. and broke their idols in a dust storm. Yeah. Why? It's because they've seen the blind, seen the lame walk in the dead race and the gospel preached in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if God ever sends another missionary, yeah. it will be the same way again. Yeah. For the gospel came not in word only, but in demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Paul said, did I come with you enticing words of man's wisdom? Amen. Said, did I come to you with my big words? And a man of God, if he can, he'll use a four-letter word, a word before he'll use a nine-letter word. Because God don't want to try to impress you that the power of God and the word of the Lord comes by your intellectual power. It comes by humble, broken, and a contrite heart, weeping and crying before Amen. the Lord. Amen. He said, I came not with enticing words of man's wisdom, 
But I came in the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost right. that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what we need. Yes. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 No, how can we get it when the preachers have never met Jesus Christ himself? Right. If the preachers have never met the Lord Jesus Christ personally, how in the world is the congregation going to get to him Amen. when they're supposed to lead him into him? Yes. No, there's no such thing as women missionaries. Not a one. God's never did call one. Yes. All God's had prophetess, but they can't preach. They prophesy. Amen. If a woman prophesies, that don't make her a prophet. Right. There's no, no fivefold ministry, and God called a prophetess. And a woman told me, she said, well, I'm not really, a, said, I'm an evangelist. And I blasted the women preachers as hard as I could hit because I knew this women preacher. Try to help him. And there, one of them said, oh, Brother Lambert said, uh, well, we're evangelizing in this area. You are? You're evangelizing. You evangelist? She said, yes. I said, you mean evangelist. There's no evangelist that's in the Bible. There's evangelists, but they're all men, not a woman in there. Yeah. <laughs> What's that you mean to tell me that I'm not evangelist? No, no, I wouldn't tell you, but Jesus will. The Bible says you're not. It says, but yes, but I've left my husband and my four children. I heard an old voice speak out, say, go preach the gospel. Wasn't God's voice? No, sir. Amen. He said, man, all this pain is what? I said, you're a real man. You should have been home with your four children and your husband. Now I said, he's got to go find him another woman because you left him and you'll be the charge of it. You'll be the blame. Um, the poor little woman, she said, let's, 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 let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. Come face to face with truth and what will you do? Ain't it terrible? The most terrible thing is not going to be in this hour. The bootlegger and the, and the hippie and the rock and roll and all this junk. Down here, they know they're lost and going to hell. But the sad thing is going to be is all these religious people going to these churches. Amen. And they stay there in church, and there'll be an angel to send over the top of that thing about a mile up there and fling hailstones weighing 90 pounds right through the roof. Blood will fly everywhere. Oh, you say, oh, brother. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. In the Bible, they stoned adulterers. The Bible, the law says stone a woman that's committing adultery. Amen. And these denominations out here are committing adultery. Amen. Claiming to be the bride of the husband Christ and running around with every man, man-made doctrine in the world. Amen. And God said he was going to stone her with hailstones from heaven weighing 90 pounds apiece. Amen. Good people sitting there. Come in here. Can you imagine now? Here he comes, you know. Stiff suit on can't work, can't have, gotta have three hundred dollars to eat. Ship socks on, ship on. Don't tell me I've seen a person I met God put me in a trance and I've seen them preachers. Yeah. And I heard an audible voice said, Ship socks on, silk underwear, and riding around in a Cadillac, warm to you, folks. Yeah. Right. Coming in there like that, coming up with your hand in your pocket, and you gotta come up. Amen. Good morning. All right, that's something. Resting in their great intellectual powers. Got to be out in 10 minutes. It won't offend nobody. Well, it'd be something one morning the rapture takes place and you're right in the tribulation and you come all, everybody coming to church in and here comes the pastor out with it and he's saying the great doxology and all and he walks up there and all wants a big hailstone. An angel gets a big hailstone and flings it right down through there. Amen. Amen. Coming right down through the steeple and right down through the church and right into the people. Amen. You say, oh, oh, Brother Bob, I'm telling you what God said. Amen. He said he's stoned in churches from heaven with hailstones. I believe what he said. Amen. He'll stone them, everyone. Amen. There's angels assigned to everyone in the denomination of churches and will sling hailstones right at them. Amen. Oh, God, how God hates that thing. Amen. No, God meets in a in a humble heart, a man that'll weep and cry before his Bible and, and get the truth and tell the people. That's where, where he deals at. Amen. Notice here, we've never had a prophet until Brother Branham came. Amen. Now, what, what's this now? 
God said he gave apostles and prophets. Why didn't say God gave pastors? Why? Why did he say why didn't he say God gave evangelists, pastors and teachers and prophets and apostles? Why didn't he say it? There's a reason why he didn't say it. You couldn't have no apostolic bride, no apostolic church. Hear it? You could not have a pastor to perfect the bride. You could not have an evangelist to perfect a, a bride until first they got a prophet. Amen. Because the word of the Lord does not come to evangelist. The word of the Lord does not come to a pastor. The word of the Lord does not come to a teacher. Amen. He's got to be taught himself. Amen. Oh, the teacher said, oh, hallelujah, I go in this room, the Lord reveals to me. He won't do it. No. He will not do it. No. Congregation said, well, I'll get over here in my Bible and I'll get it. You won't do it. No. God's got to provide a way to reveal the word to you. And if you don't find the man that God's using, you'll never hear the revelation. No. If you go reading books here and tapes, then you'll never get the revelation. But if you'll hear and recognize the ones that God sent, he'll open up the word to you and give you a revelation, not until. Amen. You can just butt right up against it and butt your head against the wall if you won't do it. Amen. Now notice here, the reason why that we haven't had an apostolic pastor or an apostolic evangelist is because first, we had to get a prophet to come on the scene. Because the pastor has got to have the same revelation. Amen. He's got to have the same revelation to perfect his congregation with that the prophet has got. See, God's got one revelation to perfect the bride with. Notice here, the Bible says one God, not three persons, one God, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. One faith. Now that one God and that one faith, that one faith, the pastor's got to preach it, the teacher's got to preach it, the evangelist's got to teach it. Amen. Every one of them has got to preach that same faith. Now notice here, if they didn't, if the pastor preached something contrary to the prophet, then what you got? Amen. Now you've got two faiths. Amen. That one faith is to perfect the bride. All right? Now the reason why we haven't had apostolic evangelists and apostolic pastors and an apostolic bride is because we did not have any prophets. The first prophet to come into existence in this last day since the days of the apostles was Brother William Branham. Amen. Notice the Presbyterians wrote a book, Pentecostal Prophets. The Pentecostals all recognized Brother Branham as a prophet. They said he was a prophet. He didn't. They said it. Amen. All Amen. denominations, the government, all the world recognized Brother William Branham to be a prophet. Don't you know the Bible said, when I send a prophet and you don't hear that prophet, judgment will come into the land. Deuteronomy 18 chapter said, but hear my prophets, touch not my prophets and do touch my anointed and touch not my anointed and don't you do my prophets any harm. Amen. See, when a prophet comes on the scene, it's danger. Great danger. Danger in what you say to him. Danger in what you say to him. Danger. Oh, don't touch him. Don't ever touch him. If you believe a prophet, I don't care what he says. Don't, don't, don't lay a hand on him. It's dangerous. Amen. And look how they laid a hand on Brother Branham. Look how they went blind, insane, graveyards are filled with people. Amen. Look at his own son even joke with him. If he hadn't turned around, he'd have cursed him. God would have. Look at his own little wife. Just got upset one day and slammed the door in his face and she took a cancer and almost died. Right. Had to go in and say, Honey, you shouldn't have done that. The Lord will make you pay for that. Good. Why are all these men I heard claiming to be prophets the way they were? Why people don't even respect them? Why a prophet, prophet is a fearful thing to be around. He's a fellow you, you don't want to be around him at all. Heard that you say something wrong. Do something wrong. Why God's right down in there. Down in there. And he can speak out any time and break your curse you. <laughs> Brother Boris and Bill Paul didn't mean to do that. Brother Brandon gets cold down. He had a toupee on his head. He's bald headed. And uh, and he had that toupee on. And Billy Paul uh, said, Daddy, go in there and take that thing off. We ain't going to dinner with you. 
He did, and the Holy Ghost leaped up inside him as ready to take his vocal cords and curse him. And when he felt the Lord moving, coming up to him, ready to speak, he turned around quick and ran to the loom, slammed the door, and locked it. And Billy tried to get in. Dad, 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 I didn't mean to say, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And he wouldn't even answer him. They had to go on without him. Oh. And then he'd come back later and said, Dad, I'm sorry. He says, Billy, don't apologize to me. You never hurt me. He said, that didn't offend me. Yeah. He says, but he didn't like it. Oh. He said, and that's why I had to turn around and go in. And he'd have cursed him. Don't you forget that Elijah coming down there. And what happened? Elijah, Elijah, this next man that God was used after the prophet came on the scene, that was the hands of the prophet. Hallelujah. Had the word of the Lord with him, was taught the word of the Lord. He had the word of the Lord in training under that man. Amen. That Elisha had been in training under that first prophet Elijah there. Amen. And what was Elisha? He was in training to become a prophet. He wasn't a prophet yet, and yet he was a prophet. But he was in training to be a prophet. That's why you can't become a prophet overnight. You've got to stay along with God to become the Word. Because Amen. you've got to have Amen. all the revelation for the hour that you're living in. Amen. Because a prophet is the inspired Word of God for the hour. Amen. The Word of the Lord comes to him. He's Amen. right and everybody Amen. else is right. Amen. What you think about it, you're wrong. Amen. He's right and everybody else is wrong. Amen. The pastor says, I think it ought to be that way. The pastor's wrong. Amen. The pastor says, well, I don't, uh, I'm right. I'm right. You're wrong. He's right. When Elijah, in training under Elijah, God had said, Elijah, anoint Elijah in thy stead. You're coming home. You're tired now. I'll use him. Anoint Elijah in thy stead. You're coming home. You're tired now. I'll use him. And he got the, the anointing of Elijah upon him, the double portion, the type of the bride ministry. Elijah is a, notice here, Elijah, he. Elijah, Elijah, she. That's the bride. That's the bride of Christ, the ministry of the bride of Christ coming down. And the mantle of Elijah, he said, if you see me go, you can have it. Amen. And what did he do? He said, if you keep your eye on the word and stay with the word, you'll come into this same pile that I got. Amen. And he did. The mantle of God fell upon him. When he come back up through there, the Bible said Elijah headed for Bethel. And Bethel is the house of God. Amen. Bringing judgment right Amen. back to the house of God. Amen. Because if judgment begins at the house of God, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Right. Here, Elijah coming back to the church, bringing the judgment ministry back to the church to get it straightened out. And when he come back there, about 40 children that heard about him coming into his ministry didn't like it. And he come down and said, hey, hey, old ball head, you ain't got no hair. I said, go on up. Now what happened? Those parents had been talking about that man of God behind his back at home. Amen. Amen. And how I see that across the country. When parents know that that's the word of the Lord and don't want to straighten up with it, then the children hear the parents talking about the man of God at home, and then they've got no more confidence in him begin to talk about him too. Amen. Don't do that. <laughs> and the children said, Go on up, old ball head. Go on up, old ball head. And they turned around and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two she bears came out of the mountains and killed all 40 of them. The fearful thing. And how they touched Brother Brown was smitten, paralyzed. I never woke up getting Brother Brown was talking to me about my ministry and trying to help me. Did you remember this when the word of the Lord comes to you and then people comes before you? And the word of the Lord begins to dress them down, reveal the secrets of the heart, and they say, Oh, Brother Lambert, that ain't the word of the Lord. He said, You say this. Wasn't pleasing what he said either. He said, Let me tell you something, Bobby. But I was standing one night preaching the gospel. And he said, And I looked down, I want something funny down there. I felt the spirit come from the front row. And I looked down there and said, A man down there with some kind of thing in his hand, swinging it like that, trying to put a spell on me. Hired by some bunch of preachers to do it. He wasn't afraid. He didn't believe that was God's prophet. He didn't believe that was the anointed Lord, but it was. Amen. And then we sat down there and swinging that thing, trying to hypnotize him. Said, I looked down there and said, if I be a servant of God, you're paralyzed from your head to your toes. Amen. Said, and they packed him out of there paralyzed, and he's paralyzed. Stayed years paralyzed, and he called me on the phone all the time and said, Brother Branham, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come and take this curse off of me. 
said, I can't. And he died with it. What is it? It's a fearful thing when a prophet of God comes on the scene. And Brother Brown said, one day, you preachers, you, you'll you reap what you sold. Your days in hand. And let me tell you, their days in hand. We're coming down to a real, real apostolic, powerful, fearful church of Jesus Christ. When the church comes on, comes on a scene, why, unless you're deadly sincere, you would have come in a mile of that place. It's a fearful, it's a fearful thing to assemble in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Knowing that the God's in there and see every evil thought that you think and everything about your life and call it right out in the open. Amen. Amen. Mm. What do you think going to be in that hour? Amen. Some woman slip in there and think nobody don't know about it and that man reach back there and say you went out on your husband last night and committed adultery. Amen. And here you over there, you're thinking this evil thing today. Don't you bring that thing in here. Get down here and repent or you'll be in trouble. Oh, that's spiritual. That's the way it was there and that's the way it's going to be today. A real, yeah, true, apostolic yeah, church yeah, come yeah. back. And them preachers should have respected and feared that prophet of God, Brother Brandon. Knowing that everything he said come to pass. Yeah. Now notice here, we did not have any ministry. Now here, let me drive down closing. I'm closing now. We did not have any gifted ministry perfecting the bride at all. Until first, the major prophet came with a foundation, message of the apostles, restoring a foundation to stand on. Now we're getting something. God help you to remain stable. You see? When you get out of good thoughts, you use all kinds of fanaticism breaks out. See? We want to start uh, getting, we get, we get all twisted up and get it on the man. Don't you never forget what I'm telling you this morning. There's not one man good for nothing. Amen. Every man that's ever born of a woman is a total failure. Amen. But ye are, you are what you are by the grace of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ and nothing else. Amen. Brother Branham was carrying water to a moonshine still when the angel Lord appeared to him. Yes. Brother Branham was a sinner, was Amen. a sinner saved by grace. Amen. And in his ministry got the supernatural that thought he was Jesus himself. Don't you never, see? Amen. Separate the man from the spirit. Separate the man from the spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. Now notice here. When the seals were opened up. When the seals opened up. Sometime after 1963, there has got to be some prophet somewhere. Amen. He said, well, I think I know who, just be still. Amen. God, let, hear me now. God will testify of his gift. He don't need you to testify. It's not your responsibility to testify of God's gift. It's God's responsibility to testify of who that is. Amen. And if you testify to it, you're killing the very thing that God sent to you. Amen. And you'll make yourself an antichrist and try to make him one too. Amen. Leave it alone. God will testify of his gifts. How many see your hands are you going to let God testify? Remember, God is obligated to those gifts. He's obligated to that gift himself. Now, if any man says he's got a revelation and God don't come sooner or later and back that up and bring what he says to pass, then God never sent him. That's why the all them things is the prophet's not judged, only the Lord judges him because nobody can judge him. He's too spiritual. Amen. It's nobody. You think, well, I don't think you ought to sit that way. See, don't do that. Yeah. Think you're wrong? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Even, if that's, even if that's wrong, you're still wrong. Amen. Don't do it. The Bible says he's in spirit to judge of all things. Amen. He judges all things, yet of himself, no man, no woman is able to judge him. Why? Because the Lord judges him. He's the Lord's servant. And it's God's place to judge him. It's the Lord's place to straighten him out when he's wrong. Amen. Even if he's wrong on something, don't tell him nothing. If he's made up in such a way, he wouldn't listen to him no way. A prophet won't listen to no pastor, no teacher. He won't listen to no man. He'll listen to one person. That's God. And they'll say, we'll kill you if you don't change. 
Amen. Well, cut your head off at 7 o'clock in the morning. If you don't change your message between now and 7 o'clock, you're going, your head's going to the chopping block, buddy. Amen. <laughs> Taking the chopping block. You ain't going to change. Why? Because a prophet is made up in such a way that he's so spiritual, so in love with the Lord, he'll just say what God said if you stone him, kill him, whatever you do. Don't make no difference if every preacher in the world is against him. He'll come with the word of the Lord. He's got the word of the Lord. Now notice, we could not have any ministry. Now I could touch it. And if this was out in public around the people following the end time message, I'll tell you, it's, what I'm saying is enough to get you hung right now. But it's the truth. Amen. And it's going to be found out the truth. Amen. Notice here, we could not have a real God called pastor perfecting a congregation. We could not have a real God called teacher perfecting a congregation. We could not have a real God called evangelist perfecting a congregation up until the opening of the seven seals. Now, how do they know enough of the Word of God to say amen to that already? Why? Because there's only one thing that will perfect the bride, and that is revelation. Now, notice that every teacher, pastor, evangelist, every one of them was to perfect the saints. They bring them into the unity of what? Under the statue of what? Every one of them wants to preach the token. Every one of them wants to preach the true revelation of what God's doing in this hour, creating a perfect man. See, that's the only thing. I'll be closing just a minute. That's the only thing that's going to go into rapture. It's a perfect man, a perfect woman, a perfect bride, a perfect church. And every pastor, every teacher, every evangelist is to perfect all their preaching. Every time they preach is to perfect you. Now I notice here. You hear the evangelist. He comes along. He preaches his opinion of it. Then he goes sit down uh, under the teacher. A teacher comes by. He begins to teach it. He teaches contrary from the evangelist. How many here has heard this all along? Been perfected? All right, then, what's wrong in it? Something wrong in it. Now, notice here, the pastor cannot preach any other revelation of what that prophet's got. Amen. How many let me just say it just like it is, see? Amen. Paul said, an apostle called of God. Now, in this hour, see, it's hard, it's sticky. But now, we're going to get down, got to get down to it sometime, rather. Yes, sometime after the opening of the seal. There already had to be a divine New Testament prophet on earth. Several of them. But there's one particular man that had to be on earth at the opening of the seal. Now notice the Holy Spirit is loose at the opening of the seal to come and teach one certain ministry. Amen. Amen. Somewhere Amen. up on earth, one certain man is going to catch the true divine revelation Amen. of the Word of God for the hour. Amen. He will have a gift from heaven. Amen. He will have one of those office gifts from heaven and may have all five of them in him. Amen. Amen. He may have all five of them in him. This one name is sure. He will be a prophet. He will have the true revelation. Now watch here. Now you could be a prophet and still not be in the office of an apostle. Now watch here. Somewhere after the opening of the seals, there has to be a prophet on the scene to catch the true revelation of this major prophet that was here. Because if God ain't got a prophet here, that message will fall to the pastor and the evangelist, and they'll mess it up. How many's got it already? Notice that it's got to come to a prophet to keep the scriptures running straight. Because the prophet, now what's here? Now this here is no good. It's just an instrument. But what? 
How sensitive it is, see. It's so made up. And that prophet is so made up, that gift in him is so made up, that when he hears the word, the Bible, coming forth and on by the Holy Spirit, that gift down inside him interprets that. Amen. And he gets the true interpretation of the Bible. Amen. That's why no theologian, no denomination, Amen. no different group has any right to interpret God's word. Amen. God is his own interpreter, and he interprets through his prophets. Amen. They're right and all else is wrong. Absolutely. Remember, there were 400 theologians. One time they were all in unity Amen. on what they were saying. The kings were in unity. But there was one king there, Jehoshaphat, something down in he didn't set to it. He said, don't you have one more? He said, we got one more. He said, but I tell you, he got it in for everybody. His, his message is different from everybody. Yeah. And he said, well, what is his name? He said, before we go up to this battle, I want to hear one more man of God. He said, sir, we got 400 best dressed, best educated prophets out here. And they're saying, unity, going up, we're going to win. I want to hear one more. Say, where's he at? Said his name is Micah, the son of Emily. Amen. He said, well, go get him. Let him come down and prophesy. And then the, and then uh, men went up there and said, now, now look, brother, come on down and say the same thing. We've got to get unity. This thing's about over. We all got to say the same thing. Wow. Then the world's here. The pressure's sitting. Now, oh, come on, brother. Let's get together. Yeah. we got to get together some way. He said, I'll say only what the Lord tells me to say. Yeah. Well, say, praise the Lord, it's going to be just the same thing we're saying. Well, say, well, you got the word of the Lord, it will be. And he went down there, and what happened? He got up there and was totally contrary from everybody. But he was right, and they all was wrong. Now, notice here, Brother Branham said, the opening of the seven seals is to loose a ministry. Don't forget it. Now, what is it? I say by the authority of God's word, because God never changes. God cannot use two men at the same time. Amen. The only way that he can deal with two men, he deals with one man first, and that other man has got to line up with what that man says. Amen. Or he will not deal with that man. All right, now. Now, not only do I see it in the word of God, but my Bible before me. And remember, I'll have to give account for what I'm saying. I don't just say anything loosely and lightly. Amen. What I say, I realize my voice is going out there, and only the Lord God can go after anything that I say Amen. and annihilate it. It's out there. I'll have to face my word. Amen. Not only do I know it by the word of God, but the Holy Spirit personally has come to me and told me this, supernaturally, to prod me on into it the preacher. So therefore, I want to say it because it's true. Amen. Amen. Lord, he came to me one night about two years ago, spoke out and said, what the bride needs in this hour is a vindicated prophet. The bride will have to have a prophet. And also then, I go in my room and I try to run from that because I know what a controversy it is. Now what we got, everybody wants to be a prophet. Everybody wants to be a prophet. i never seen an hour when it, so many guys raising up that claim to be prophets. They won't come out and say, look at him, see. Try to use his army. Try to do this. And just, oh, it's just a bunch of carnal impersonations. <laughs> but a prophet is an inspired preacher that has the revealed word of God lying down. Right, He's not just seeing vision. <laughs> oh, it's just awful. But, oh, I'm so glad that God will testify of his gifts. He'll testify what it is and where it's at and all about it. Now notice here. Now notice the major prophet has been gone six years. And still the thing's in a mess. How many say amen? All kinds of men claiming to be in the fivefold ministry. Every one of them teaching and preaching different. Therefore, they cannot, they cannot, total impossibility, they cannot perfect the bride. They cannot do it. Now notice, there's only one revelation that will perfect the bride. And that revelation, after the prophet's gone six years, between now and 1963, there has to be somebody on earth somewhere that is a New Testament prophet that has caught the true divine revelation of the word of God for the hour. Now notice, wherever that man is, 
wherever that word is that he's got, it will be perfecting the people that's here. And they will be growing up into the statue of a perfect man, ready for the sealing angel to pass by and seal them. Now, when that is accomplished, wherever that man is at, now notice that's why I believe that he'll not only be a prophet, but he will also be a pastor. Because there's where he'll get his training pastor. Amen. While he's waiting on the Lord, he'll be training in that message, getting that inside of him, and bringing it out to the people, and they will be growing far advanced. There, see. Now notice here, Thank you, Lord. he's a prophet, has to be a prophet, because the word of the Lord comes to that gift that he has down there, like this microphone. It's so sensitive, and when it comes, it's, Flashes out the true interpretation. Now watch here. Now, because it is God's gift, because it is God's revelation, then in God's own time and season, the Almighty God will come around and vindicate that man and testify of that gift that he'll say, Hear ye him? This is my gift. God will testify of his gift. How many believe that? Now, the first vindication that he's a prophet will be that those that hear him Amen. will see above all the other ministers that he has the revealed word. Amen. And that will establish them where they're not tossed to and fro no more from every wind of doctrine that comes by from the preacher. They won't hear nobody else. Amen. Now, notice that when you hear that prophet, it establishes you in the solid revealed word of God. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the side of men. Who's the men? The men are men that think that they are preaching. Called of God. They come by, see, they have not recognized that prophet, they have not heard that revelation. They come by thinking that they're perfecting you, and while they come by and mess you all up. Amen. Some of them come, come by and pregnant you with a seed of distress and then get you pregnant with something else besides Christ. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Now notice here. After the open seals, this revelation comes to God's prophet somewhere. A man has been trained, been in training for some time, through hard knocks, maybe beat all over the country. But God will come right in and back that thing up sooner or later. His first vindication is that he's by being a prophet, he is able to put the word of God and make it so plain to the people that it starts uniting them to the head. Now watch this. Of course, this, you know, you can preach this. Now watch how perfect the scriptures is. You can't make it lie. Notice here that all these pastors that really have offices, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers, Notice that they have no revelation at all. Amen. They have no revelation at all. They're going on with the same plain, simple messages that they can get. But they know themselves that they don't have revelation, and they know by being called of God that it's not all over, that something's got to take place. Now notice, when they come in contact with that real true gift, and they hear that word coming forth from that man, they'll say, he's got the word of the Lord. Amen. Because that pastor, that pastor's gift, coming from heaven also, Amen. see, that pastor's gift, coming from heaven also, because it does come from heaven, it's got to line up with that other gift that comes Amen. from heaven. How do you see that? Amen. Now you've always wondered why this preacher said this, the Lord told me this, and this preacher said the Lord told me that, and both of them contrary. Yeah, yeah. This pastor preached this, and this other pastor yeah. preached it different. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't wasn't in the picture at all. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. He got to face it like it is. Yeah, yeah. I notice when this pastor meets this prophet, yeah. he will recognize that gift, and then because he does recognize it, humbles himself under it, yeah, then God holy. Spirit then blesses him with the same revelation. And then though they may be hundreds of miles apart, if he comes and preaches to you, he'll preach the same revelation that that prophet preached. 
And that's what that will even perfect you more and bless you more. Yeah. Then you got unity of faith. Unity of faith. Faith is revelation. You got unity on the same revelation. Yeah. Now every gift, where it's a pastor, a teacher, or an evangelist, everyone in true gifts, when they come in contact with that prophet, they'll humble themselves right down under. Mm -hmm. Now notice here. What did Elisha do? Elisha was a prophet. He knew that he had a calling even when he was plowing them oxen. He knew that there was something about him. Amen. And when Elijah come by and dropped his mantle on him when he's plowing with 12 year old Johnson, he left everything, mom and dad and everything, and went after that man. Amen. Notice here that that prophet humbled himself down under the major prophet to be taught the revelation by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then the other men, they have the same quality of spirit. They humble themselves down under God's New Testament prophet. Amen. And then because of they do, now, I could not tell you some things like that. Lord have mercy. Then God blesses them with the same revelation. And then wherever they go, they will perfect the bride. Hallelujah. See? And they will bring their people into the unity of that one faith. They got one faith, one Lord. Now, what's the Bible? See, the Bible's perfect. In numerology, it's perfect. Types and shadows is perfect. One faith. One revelation. I go out here to say, Brother Lambert, what faith are you? There's only one faith in the Bible. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I'm Catholic faith. No such thing in the Bible. Amen. Well, I'm Baptist faith. No such thing in the Bible. Well, I got the faith of Pentecost. No such thing in the Bible. There's only one faith, one Lord, and one baptism to come into the body with. Amen. Can't buy yourself into the body. You can't... Uh, 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 you can't work yourself into the body. There's only one way to come into the true church, and that is by a new birth and by yes, one man. spirit baptism. Yes, one Lord and by one spirit baptism are you all submerged into the body. Amen. Now, before we can have a body, a true church, a true bride, we've got to have first a prophet. And then when God gets that prophet started in his ministry with the true revelation, and the different ministers of God begin to line up to it, then you're getting getting going now. You're getting close to something. Now, what will happen? Maybe some of them... Now, here's what we want from See, everybody across the country is picking themselves out of ministry. I know some groups that's got yes, as much as 50, 50 preachers in it. And none of them really have ever met the Lord Jesus Christ. None of them really can say truthfully that they know what they are. Now there's something wrong. Yes. See? Notice here that the word of the Lord does not come to the teacher, nor the pastor, nor the evangelist, but it comes to that prophet. Now notice here that that man will be a shepherd pastor. He'll be a teacher. And it'll come a day when he will be an apostle. Now what is an apostle? Apostle is a sent one. So there'll come an hour when God will send that revelation out and it'll become an apostle. Amen. And what will it do? It'll bring every predestinated seed into the, excuse me, into the unity of the faith. Now notice this will be the full body carpet. <laughs> notice here in closing, in Matthew 24 and 24, I mean Matthew 24 chapter, Somewhere along about the middle of the chapter it says about the coming of the Lord. Wheresoever the carcass is. Now what is the carcass? This prophet will be bringing the full body carcass for the eagle feed on. Now wherever that wherever that ministry goes, the eagles will gather to it. Both the teachers, the pastors, and the evangelists will gather to it. And then what you got? Unity of faith. Coming in the statue of perfect man, and every one of them will be sealed by the Holy Spirit because they're coming into perfect union. That's where you find your power. When the preachers and the people begin to line up with that one revelation, you find a unified, powerful church is going to raise upon the scene. Now, what is perfection? There's only three steps to perfection: justification, sanctification. And the statue of the perfect man. 
by the coming of the capstone, the bridegroom. Notice wherever that carcass body goes, it'll make the word of the Lord so plain. Now, it won't be great intellectualism, great uh, 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 this or that. It'll be just a humble, plain message of the Bible. But the sheep is made up in such a way that they'll hear that voice. And that full body carcass will be preached. The eagles will eat off of it, get strength to go up in the statue of perfect man, and then they will receive the true, the true baptism of the Holy Spirit, which will place them into the body of Christ. That will be his body. Once you come in there, friend, you're rapture bound. You're sealed until the day that he takes you off the earth. Now, friend, that's got to be on earth someplace. Amen. Someplace that's got to be on earth. Now, wherever that is, wherever that is, it will be bringing the saints into perfection. Now, you know what's going to happen when the eye arrives when they get up to the top here. When, when they get up to the top there, now hear me, there will be another sound from heaven come, like a rushing mighty wind, fill all the house where they're sitting, a lick of fire will set upon each one, and they will be sterilized by fire. Everything that sanctification didn't get, that lick of fire will sterilize them from their head to their toes. And they will be a total new creation. A living epistle, no one read by all men. God, tabernacle in human flesh. See, a lot of people don't understand that. See, not only, not only are you being sanctified, but truth continually, getting rid of your faults, getting rid of this, getting rid of that. And then, oh, he to see the Holy Spirit to perfect in his word. Why did the Bible say, and suddenly, they were all steady. Now notice they wasn't standing. But now the Bible means everything. It said, and they were all in one accord. Now watch this. Was the Lord Jesus Christ the great prophet? Amen. Did not, did not, wasn't there not a prophet there called who? Peter? Did not Peter get such a revelation that God said, I'll build my church upon? Amen. Jesus Christ said, who do men say that I am? Amen. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Some say it's your prophet. Some say you're this. Jeremiah, Isaiah. He said, he looked at that little preacher and he said, Peter, who do you say I am? The Holy Spirit in that gift down to Peter. See, he caught that message in his brain. He said, well, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Set of inspiration, the Holy Spirit. Watch here. Jesus said, now. Upon this rock I'll build me a bride. Notice that Jesus could not build a bride upon anything at that time. He couldn't build a bride upon nothing until first some man got a revelation of the promised word for the hour. True? Then when Peter got that key, what's here? When Peter got that keystone revelation, when he got it, Jesus said, Blessed are you, preacher. Blessed are you, Peter. That man never revealed this to you. Somebody never told it to you. But my Father, which is in heaven, has you give you a revelation on the Word. Amen. Now, upon this Amen. revelation that you got, I'm going to build me a bride church. Amen. It wasn't Amen. built upon the man, Peter, but it was built upon the revelation that Peter had. Amen. And he said, The gates of hell will never prevail again. To Peter, Bless you, my little brother. Said, I'm going to give you a key. Now, what is the key? Now, I'm closing just a minute. Now, what is the key? Jesus said, I give unto you. The Catholics have preached about this law. Let me just preach about it a minute. What is the key? Amen. They say it's built upon Peter. Why, just a few days before that, Peter cussed and everything. Denied the Lord and everything. It wasn't built upon Peter. Amen. It was built upon the revelation that Peter had. Amen. Peter was a sinner and a failure. The revelation he had was perfect. He said, now I'll give you a key. I'm going to give you a key. Now I said, now with this key, what was it? It's going to unlock the kingdom of heaven to the people of hearing. Now what is the kingdom of heaven? Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of heaven is the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the body of Jesus Christ. So said, now I'm going to give you the key to unlock it. It's closed up now. 
Notice the door was closed. He couldn't get it until this man got it. Amen. Now when Peter got the revelation, he got a key. Amen. Now what was the key of revelation? Amen. Now what? A key is no good unless it's in somebody's hand. Amen. Now what does the key do? It can lock it or it can unlock it. It can lock it to you or it can unlock it to you. Amen. Now what did Peter do? He stayed right there and preached that revelation. Preached it to all of ministry. Preached it to all 120. And he got them, every one, with that revelation at one mind and at one accord on what? That God was going to pour out his spirit. And what happened? After he had finished all his preaching, the Bible said, and this wrote, and they were all in one place, one place, one, not many places, one certain place. Why? You think you'd have got it if you'd been outside of Peter and over there somewhere on the other side of town? I <laughs> know you'd miss it. They was in one accord in one place, and they were sitting. Not standing, they were sitting. Why were they were sitting? Why wasn't they standing? They were sitting. Why God caught them unaware? So it says, they couldn't got all excited and run out the door before they really got the job done. Wow. See, he knows how to do everything. Yes, See, if he lets you be standing, yes. he's better ready to leave. If you got excited, you get around. Say, I got it! Glory to God, I got it! Like so many did today. Yes, amen. They said, I got it when they didn't get it. Amen. Nobody caught them all set. First, they was all in one place and one mind and one accord. And suddenly, suddenly when they least expected it, <laughs> All at once while they were sitting there, maybe Peter was just got through preaching or something, and maybe just sat down or something. And all at once they went. <laughs> the wind started blowing, but it wasn't normal. Door open, doors were closed, and all the windows closed. Yeah. But that when that wind started blowing, there was anointing in. Mm -hmm. And there was enough anointing in that wind that so powerful anointing that it paralyzed. They couldn't move their hands or nothing. Now what's the power of God just numbs you? Just numbs you. You can't hardly move your hands or nothing. It's numbs your flesh. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He come in and numbed them with his presence. For they couldn't even talk or nothing. And they was all just paralyzed by his presence. He said, oh, glory to God, I shout. Not when it comes like that, friend. I Take it from me. You won't move a finger. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Now, y'all know what I've seen that yes. story. How many still remember that? Yes, sir! I, I just as good as there, just the point. And then his Holy Spirit, or that wind, what is the supernatural wind? What is it? Now, here's, here's this is my opinion of it. I may be wrong, but I'll just give my opinion of it here. I believe it's that angel. Mm -hmm. The main sealing angel. He stands there, whipping in wind, and creates that wind. That's the same thing that went before David. He blowed in the mulberry tree, and that old mulberry bush just bent over him. Was a powerful anointing. And when he did that, waved them wings like that with them angels in there, it just numbed you. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you something. When he comes here, you know it's come here hundreds of times, supernatural divine being. Oh, and was oh, immediately all children, everybody starts crying. Why is it? It's because them angels, you bumped up against them. They bumped up against you. You couldn't see them, but you bumped up against their presence and you cry. Yeah. You usually, even before I could ever feel his presence, all at once, uh, I, I'll feel a tear. I've been reading my Bible. And I'll watch something will be wet in the page, and I won't even know what it is. And I'll look around, and it'll be me. Tears will be running off, and I'll watch many boys there. Mm -hmm. See, his presence, even though you may not be conscious of it, I'll watch you cry. I've seen Brother Branham. Brother Branham is walking in, saying, I'll watch cook and start crying. I don't know crying. The wait to start crying. Say, what's the matter with me? God's prophet is coming. Yeah. How many know that to be the fact? Yeah. Now, when you bump up and feel that presence and come and start crying, what is that? That's him. That's an angel. Yeah. Now, when this great feeling angel comes, moves those wings like that, he creates that wind. You hear it. Blowing. That's so powerful that it numbs you where you're sitting. Then the next thing happens is that you're so paralyzed in his presence, there is that pillar of fire hanging there. And you see it with your eyes, your naked eye. And there is, a, there is that pillar of fire hanging there. And you see it with your eyes, your naked eye. 
And there it's swirling around like that. Now what is he doing? Now you've grown up in the statue of the perfect man. You've obeyed his word. You've recognized his minister. You've obeyed his word. You've overcome. You've died out. Now what's happened? Now you are getting ready to receive your inheritance. Now he's swirling around. You're getting ready to divide, divide himself. Swirling around there. And all at once, he, he knows the one who's going to get it first. While he's swirling around there, all at once of it, a part of that pillar of fire. Say, now, Brother Bob, it'll be just this way. I know. How you know? I just know. A lick of it. And I say, well, let's say, like this. A bee, uh, about that much of that fire come out of there. A lick. for about two or three inches long, four inches long. And all at once, it, it's alive. It's spirit. And everybody's seeing that. Nobody says a word. You're paralyzed. You just all you do is just look. Okay. And you're seeing that. Your breath just taken away from you. Can hardly breathe. And you're gnawing. You're just paralyzed. Like you're just like granite rock. You can't even move. You're just numb. It's awesome. Fearful. You say, Glory God, I'm hoping I'm there. You better pray you're not. You ain't ready. Amen. It's going to be the awfulest place to be it ever was, being that place not be ready. Sure. If, you're, if you're not up in here, you better say, Oh God. Don't let me be there when that happens. <laughs> and then when that lick whirling out once it comes out, it'll come right out over there, and it'll come right over the first person. I don't know who it'll be, but it'll be somebody. And it'll come right over top of it, just crackling and popping. Wow. And over, and you think you're anointed then, when that hits you, buddy, you're in for it. Everything that sanctification didn't get, he'll get it. Uh, he'll sit right over top of you and burn out every bit of self in you. Sterilize you. Uh, you know, fire is the best sterilizer uh, I know. Of. And he said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost in fire. Uh, and that fire sits up there, it'll sterilize you, kill you. Or anything that sanctification didn't get, he'll get it. And then when he's satisfied with you, when he's satisfied with burning you out, then he comes right down in you. That Holy Spirit is a portion of God. It's a baptizer. He comes right down and what's it do? It submerges you by a spiritual application into the literal body of the Lord Jesus. You and him become one now. What it is, you got the engagement ring on your finger sitting there. You believe every word. You've overcome. You're striving under affection. Then he, the bridegroom comes over you with a lick of fire, comes right down inside you, takes up his abode in your soul by a powerful baptism of the Holy Ghost, and then you are united with the bridegroom and you become one. Now, hitherto before that, you didn't ask nothing. You was afraid. But now you enter into divine relationship with Christ. You become one with him. He said, in that day you'll know when that sound from heaven comes and all that happens in that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, and I in you, and you in me. And now the works that I did, you're going to do them also. It'll be just common if you lay hands upon the sick and they'll recover. It'll just be common for angels to appear to you. All these supernatural things will be just common to you now because you are now a supernatural divine being. Amen. Wherever you go, God goes. Amen. How many want that? Notice that every one of them there receives the same experience. And collectively, they're all baptized in the body of Christ and individually. Each individual that's ready goes into the body. Now hear me, children. When that takes place, then you can say, come see the bride. Amen. Wherever that takes place, that will be the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then that will go across the country and around the world. And that will gather all of the wheat into the body. And when the last person receives that experience, then the Gentiles, they finish, and then she'll pass through Israel, and the rapture will take place, marriage supper of the Lamb will begin, great tribulation will set in, and God will be dealing with 144,000. How many want to be in that number? Oh, God, realize, friend, that one of these days, Wherever that's at, the preacher will close his Bible for the last time. You'll hear your last sermon. The Bible will be closed. Put aside. And then God will be coming down out of heaven with a rushing mighty wind, with a pillar of fire. 
and divide you in your inheritance. Now notice, as soon as that comes inside of you, as soon as that comes inside of you, then you're in his body, you're one with him. You enter into a supernatural divine covenant by the blood of Christ. You have power, move mountains, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. 30 minutes, Brother Brown said, after that takes place, wherever that takes place, said 30 minutes, within 30 minutes. Now, he may operate on you for an hour and a half. When that takes place, it may be as much as four hours, five hours before you ever leave the building. But, brother, when you, if that would happen here, and you, and that would happen this morning and this afternoon about four o'clock, it'd be noise abroad throughout America that God poured out his spirit. Before the, the first of the week, it'd throw into this town thousands and thousands of people to see what happened. Amen. You go to every door in this town. There's no policeman, nothing to stop you. You you go from door to door. Ah 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 ah! I just oh I just oh. Stammer and lips and another tongue. Amen. Going in the streets and screaming. Ah, ah. They couldn't stop you. Try to put out a, a house on fire in the wind today. And what will all that do? That'll be noise abroad. God pour out His spirit, and it will cause a revival. Will sweep across. America and gather the bride together and around the world. Yes, Lord. Now that's, that's what the Holy Spirit's revealed to me. Amen. And if it's the Holy Spirit's revealed to me, it'll come to pass. Yes. 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 How many like to have a baptism of fire? Yes. Just burn out all that thing. Yes. Yes. Paralyze and then fill you up and become one with Christ. Then that's the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, the bride. Now, how's anybody else going to get in the bride? The same way that they got in. Amen. One faith, one Lord, one baptism to be baptized with, and baptism of fire. Let's pray. Now, children, if your pastor's right, and if I didn't believe that's right, I wouldn't be preaching. Do you see what a delusion people are in today around the world? Everybody claiming to be the Church of Jesus Christ, and here it is, 1972. Where is the unity? Where is the faith? Where is all these things? May the Lord Jesus soon do this great thing that we're talking about so that there can be a bride. Yes. While our sister comes to organ and piano. Yes. We're hearing things that the prophets and apostles desire to get into one day. The book's open. We're being able to see. Seven angels have come down from heaven, opened up the seals. Amen. The revelation of God has got to be here in the hearts of his people. Somewhere, a little group, somewhere, that's able to usher in the second coming of Jesus Christ, the bridegroom to the bride. Now let's pray while our sisters play softly. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for your word. So thankful, Heavenly Father, that we can be living in this hour when the true light of Christ is coming forth. So happy, Lord, that you're going to glorify your name just one more time. Lord, Samson's hair is growing out again, Father. Lord, the eyes have once been put out, blinded, Lord, but now the covenant is beginning to grow out. We're coming into the real divine relationship with Christ. Well, it's going to rise on the scene, a powerful bride church, Lord. And you're going to speak from heaven one more time and prove the word of God. Father, there's so many things out there claiming to be you, claiming to be your bride church. This one thing I know, Lord, she's going to be bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, spirit of your spirit, power of your power. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you train men and women here in this congregation to be used in this last great move to the Gentile people. Father, may everyone here lay aside every weight in the sin which we do accept the Lord. My God, may they come into this little place and pray and seek the face of the living Christ. Lord, how I pray that we'll move up with a greater prayer life and a greater consecration. And Lord, may our cheeks be bathed with tears. 
Usher in the bridegroom to the bride, the marriage of the Lamb has come, and let us make ourselves ready, Father. Lord, may every spot, every blemish be washed from our garments, Lord. May we clean our lives up, Lord. Everything that's wrong, may we make it right. God, don't let us wait till we're dead to try to purge your soul. But, oh, Lord, let us, let us purge from our hearts everything that's wrong. Purge it out, Lord. Purge out the leaven that's among us, Lord, and we may become a new lot, Lord. Father God, I pray that you stimulate us and stir us to the uttermost, Lord. Lord, if there are people that be sitting here, have been sitting here under this ministry, Lord. And Lord, they don't have no revelation. God, have mercy upon them and help them to see where they're short, Lord. Reveal them what's standing between them and their Savior. Lord, let there nothing be between our soul and our Savior. The Father God, we need revelation more than anything else in this world. Now, Lord, we see the Great Depression setting in. Lord, soon we'll be testing upon every scripture, upon every word. The devil has pushed us into place to make us stand upon the word of God. And we thank you for it, Father. Yes. Whatever thou seest fit to bring us to this great glorious outpouring of the capstone baptism of the Holy Spirit, the marriage of the Lamb. Father God, we want to be one with you more than anything else in this world. Lord, what a glorious day that'll be. The lame will walk and the blind will see and the dead will be raised. The creative power of God will be manifested. Amen. Lord, God, deity will be speaking in human flesh again as it was on the day of Pentecost. Grant it, Lord, prove to this world, Lord, that they have believed the devil's lie and prove that the Lord Jesus, that the Lord Jesus is living and moving in his bride. Bless each and every one now, Lord. And Lord, I ain't no preacher, but God, I know that the things that I've spoken is the truth. Yes. Help us to receive them with all of our hearts. Yes. Lord, our congregation should be way up the road. God, help the people not to take these things common, but realize you've given us a chance, Lord, to press into the, the return of apostolic power back to the true bride. God, help us to receive it first. In Jesus' name. Let's stand to repeat things, page 217. <laughs> I don't believe it'll be that way. Yeah, but oh God, it will be that way. We haven't had the bridegroom to return to the earth to marry the bride yet, but he'll be here. Oh, won't that be wonderful? Then you'll be married to the bride, to the bridegroom. Not only will you have an engagement ring, but you'll have the wedding band of his unmerited favor and grace. And then what'll happen? When people come in, visitors come in, what will they do? They'll come into the people that have that, and they'll be setting in Christ. They won't be believing on him, but they'll be believing in him then. And all these gifts and all these great things will be in operation. Amen. Hallelujah. Friends, we can't afford to miss that chance. How many is going to try to do better than this congregation? God grant it. Let's sing this now. Amen. Yeah.
about the depression out here. You know what? See, we talked about the outpouring. And it'll come just like this. I haven't just been emotionally upset, nervous. I may be nervous. I may be emotional, but I know what I'm talking about. The Lord God appeared to me and told me these things. I pray that God will help you, congregation. Let me tell you something. You of all people upon earth, you're in the most terrible place of anybody upon earth. <laughs> to be where God's great revelation is going for. Do you realize that if you don't make that bride, what a terrible place you'll be in? You give more account for anybody that's ever been in. I pray that God won't let you just remain like you have been 72, like you have been 71. See, so many of us just keep putting off, putting on, lag around, lays around. God help you, children. I've done all that I can do for you. You've heard enough revelation. You don't need to hear not one other message free. Not one message do you need. So what you need is every man here work out his salvation with fear and trembling. Every woman pray and cry and struggle and strive with your soul in a prayer struggle with you and your Savior. That's what I need. That's what you need. Every one of us. No with her heads bowed and her eyes closed. How many say why well, Brother Bob's gone that you're going to get down to bed? This congregation is dragging its feet. I, I don't know what's going to take to wake you up here. We just drag the service and drag back home. And I don't know what you're waiting on. 
Now, where you just waiting on Brother Bob to come by and try to pull some magic wand and it'll happen. It don't come that way. It's something you've got to do. Figure in and out and up and down. Sometimes you think, well, maybe I'm the, I don't know. Oh, friend, if you believe this, take a hold of it quickly before it passes you by. Wouldn't it be terrible if the Lord would just, well, I don't know what to say. But I pray that you people start praying. What you say? Oh, we got the revelation. Let's do something about it. Yes, Lord. Now you see that. See how late it is. The person sitting in out here. Fourteen people in the group out of work. People here like Brother Johnson. No hope for a job. Don't look like an alien. Left everything he had to come here for an outpour. He don't want to stay around here like this. Pressure up on him like that. Why the prayer? Why you men ought to be in this? be in this place here, and I understand that somebody don't even come to prayer meeting. You'll never make me believe you believe me. It's too trouble for you. That's just the way that you're going to miss the rapture with my prayer. We really believe this message, this place you talk about crying and tears and screaming. No. If they going up, it'd be going up. We'd better wake up quickly. And I pray that while I'm gone, I come back. The presence of Christ will be with you. You'll be praying. I tell you, what a rebuke it is to us. Here's people, don't even, not even under the blood of the Lord Jesus, have no revelation at all. Have prayer meetings going night and day all over the country for God to pour out the Spirit. And here we're supposed to have the revelation we don't even want to pray. And that's hard, right? I don't mean to just say it like that, but it's true. Ooh. And getting answers to the prayers. And look at what we've heard. God help the pastor here and God help you. We got a terrible responsibility. Yes. And seventy two yes. we cannot go through seventy two like we have seventy one. We've got to press the battle to the gate. We've got to draw our sword and cut through these devils. Amen. Pray and strive and hang on like Jacob until we wrestle with the angel of the Lord. How many want to wrestle with, with him with your soul and come into that great thing? Let's see the hand. God help us. We've got to do it. Now let's put our heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to ask our minister brother in the back to dismiss the congregation or... Just thankful for this brother that's seeking truth. Just pray that all of us together, this little independent work here, will strive and struggle to come into something real to show New England what a real Holy Ghost church is. Let's face up to a responsibility in our children. Every one of us live like the whole thing depended upon you yourself. God help me, I'm going to give myself continually to the Word of God in prayer this year. I'm going to stay right in that Word, just in prayer, and serve the Lord with all my heart. And we got young men here, God help you, young women. What few months is left up on earth, I pray that each one will live it for Christ. It will all be over in just a little bit. Now their heads bowed and eyes closed while our brother pray. Remember to me tonight. God bless us. We want to pray people and all the people that have a better money. We're going to individual homes. We 